The, the LOXO305 study is a, a large phase one trial evaluating the uh, non-covalent reversible BTK inhibitor LOXO305 in patients with relapsed and refractory B-cell malignancies. Uh, BTK inhibitors have become an important part of treatment for patients with CLL and uh, B-cell lymphomas, including mantle cell lymphoma and Wallenstrom macroglobulinemia. However, the majority of uh, patients uh, discontinue treatment uh, mostly due to uh, disease resistance or intolerance. So LOXO305 was specifically developed to overcome the problem of, um, of treatment resistance uh, with activity against uh, the C481S mutant, which uh, mediates resistance in a substantial proportion of patients with CLL who develop uh, uh, resistance to uh, first-generation BTK inhibitors. Uh, we included patients who had uh, previously received treatment for uh, their CLL or lymphoma, and this was quite a large study with uh, 323 patients included overall. Of these, uh, 170 uh, patients had CLL or SLL and 139 had uh, lymphomas of varying subtypes. The patients who were treated with LOXO305 were uh, fairly characteristic of a phase one study population and they were enriched for um, high-risk molecular and biologic features. So the median age was 68 years. Um, high-risk features were present in uh, a, num a, a reasonably high proportion of patients with CLL, uh, TP TP53 mutation in a third, 17p um, deletion in 25%, and 88% um, of patients having unmutated immunoglobulin heavy chain uh, re uh, uh, regions. Um, the median number of treatments for patients with CLL was three, and uh, the number of prior, median number of prior lines of treatment for patients with mantle cell lymphoma was also three, and uh, the, the vast majority of patients had re had received previous treatment with a BTK inhibitor. Eighty six percent of the CLL patients, and ninety three percent of the mantle cell lymphoma patients. Considering safety, this uh, drug is uh, well tolerated um, and across the seven dose levels explored from 25 to 300 milligrams, uh, we did not observe dose limiting toxicity. The um, safety profile was quite favorable and most of the adverse events were grade one or grade two in severity. The only adverse events that we saw in more than 10% of patients were fatigue, diarrhea and bruising. Uh, as, as mentioned, uh, high, high grade three plus adverse events were infrequent. And in particular, we saw only as two of the 323 patients developed atrial uh, fibrillation during the course of the trial. Um, and both of these patients had a prior history of atrial fibrillation and thus these were considered unrelated. One patient experienced a grade three bleeding event um, after a bicycle accident and we did not see major bleeding uh, otherwise. Um, we had 18 patients on this trial who discontinued BTK inhibitor for previous um, side effects, and none of these patients experienced a recurrent event on LOXO305, highlighting the fact that this drug appears to be tolerated in patients who are intolerant of first-generation BTK inhibitors. When we consider the efficacy of this, this, this agent, um, firstly, considering CLL, 139 patients were uh, valuable for efficacy. And among these patients, the objective response rate was 63%. The interesting thing about this is it did not matter whether patients had um, a, a, a discontinued, the, the response rate was the same, regardless of whether patients discontinued their previous BTK inhibitor for treatment resistance or intolerance. And uh, we saw similar response rates uh, regardless of this. And in fact, uh, among patients who had a BTK C481 mutation, uh, we saw similar response rates, 75% in, in those 20 patients, uh, compared with 60% in the patients without the mutation, uh, demonstrating that uh, the presence of the C481S mutation did not uh, predict uh, inferior um, treatment outcomes with this agent. Um, and we also saw high, high rates of response in patients with uh, TP, TP53 aberration, 79% here. 88% of patients with CLL remain on study, uh, and the median follow-up at this stage is uh, six months for these patients.
Considering patients with lymphoma, a uh, slightly smaller number of patients here, um, there were 56 patients uh, efficacy available with mantle cell lymphoma, and among these, the objective response rate was 52%. Um, similar, again, in patients who had prior BTK inhibitor exposure. We did see two patients who had prior CAR T cell exposure, both respond to treatment. And uh, we also saw uh, two or four patients with blastoid variant mantle cell lymphoma, which is very difficult to treat, respond. 57% uh, of patients with mantle cell lymphoma remain on, uh, on treatment. And the median follow-up for these uh, mantle cell lymphoma patients was six months. Um, when we consider the other B cell lymphoma subtypes, um, 19 patients were with Wallenstrom macroglobulinemia were efficacy available, uh, many of them treated at my, my centre. And among these patients, the objective response rate was 68%, um, in mostly uh, partial and minor responses. Um, and this was similar among the patients who had prior BTK inhibitor exposure with 10 of 13 patients remaining on treatment after a median of 4.6 months. We saw a 75% response rate among the eight patients with Richter's transformation, uh, 20, uh, six, six, of, uh, six of 25 patients with diffuse large B cell lymphoma and uh, two, two of nine patients with marginal zone lymphoma. So to summarize, uh, LOXO305, which is an oral once daily uh, covalent non-reversible uh, inhibitor of uh, BTK, uh, has a, a good safety profile with a few um, severe adverse events and uh, a uh, more certainly from the experience what we've seen so far in, in the phase one trial, a favorable side effect profile relative to first-generation BTK inhibitors. In addition to that, and I think the main thing to come from this study, we uh, observed activity across a range of uh, B-cell malignancies in which you would expect uh, BTK inhibition to be successful, including among patients who had experienced treatment failure due to intolerance and resistance uh, to first-generation BTK inhibitors. So I think that this drug is certainly... Uh, very uh, promising and will certainly have a role to play in patients who have experienced treatment failure from first-generation BTK inhibitors.